all right well let the journey begin again so that is the motto at which i joined the navy and i guess that's the motto that continues <laughs> throughout this project <laughs> so i have taken a long time off apologize and now i'm trying to get back into it uh today we are working on the tunnel still what we've got going on here is the mount kind of the engine mount frame uh these are the marks that go to the nose gear and my task today is to kind of complete the fuel lines coming forward and this forward bulkhead you can see i've have uh, bonded in the top part of the bulkhead in the tunnel and i've got the bottom part here that i need to make sure that those notches are for the rudder pedals that come forward or rudder cables i should say that come forward into here so today I'm going to be mock mounting this frame with the rudder pedal system that goes between here to verify that the cables have the proper clearance so then i can go forward with uh, installing and, and final fitment of the two access panels the one where you see the hole in the floor and then after that uh nut plates so i can secure it in place and we should be in business uh, there'll be a couple more holes in this for mainly for the fuel lines for the send and return fuel line that'll come from here uh, from the fuel selector if you will and then the other the return to the tank but making progress here's the view from the inside the rotor pedals there uh, you can see the phenolic board they get screwed in to a couple nut plates underneath that uh, fiberglass in piece of wood plywood that was done many moons ago um, so it's all kind of coming together and that's the other side the pilot side so as I move one you see how it will move the other and that way whatever control inputs the pilot does the co-pilot will feel vice versa and they can override well they're not necessarily override each other but they can feel pressure um, it's always Always nice to have dual controls in an airplane. All right, so I got all the mock uh, engine mount and the rudder posts removed. And now I'm working on, uh, since I was able to verify the clearance here, I went ahead and transferred those marks to these, uh, to this uh, access panel. So you see I have these kind of cut out areas for the rudder pedals to come from or rudder cables to come from rather. And I also went ahead and marked and drilled out the holes for the access panel to mount to. So um, it'll be rigid. The next portion I'm gonna do, I'm, on, I'm by myself, so I won't be able to get any video of it, but I'm gonna do a layup right here, um, kind of an L-shaped layout, where it's gonna go onto this uh, bottom closeout panel. And you can see it's kind of got an oil can effect to it. Um, so this will help make it a little rigid as well as when the access plate goes in there but i'm going to do the layup kind of put some release tape on on this paper here uh, place the layup on this and carefully bring this in lay it down and kind of push it out and press it down in here and then i'll lift it up like so and I'll crawl underneath the airplane and come in through the other access panel on the bottom and just do some final uh, uh, final adjustments to the layup. And then hopefully that'll secure this piece that extrudes a little bit. And once the whole setup is in, I'll know how much of this to trim off or brace back up uh, to kind of close out this hole that was for the monowheel. Okay. This is uh, post cure after doing the support flange uh, for the access panel in the tunnel of the Europa. I'm at the engine between the footwells looking back. Um, earlier I talked about the relief cuts for the rudder cables. And so as you can see, there it is. Uh, obviously I have to do some cleanup. You can see the release tape here that I used it's just packing tape, clear packing tape. Um, that way uh, the it, epoxy wouldn't 
stick to uh, the surface here, which it would absolutely love to stick to this. Um, but the tape allows it to release pretty easily. We'll get a view inside. Kind of see that flange there. I have to do some cleanup here on the corner. And then I'll come back and put in, um, as you can see, a hole there. Those are for the screws to go in, and behind those I'll have nut plates. So when this panel goes in, a screw will be here, and be a new one down here. And just hold that all together. Okay, so the access panel is complete, and you can see a little discoloration there. I had to cut that out. I wasn't thinking at the time when I did the layup. I used uh, micro. So what I did is I cut that out and used flocks, and there's uh, three layers of bid behind that where I cut out to give um, just something that the nut plate could attach to. Again, it's, it's not necessarily a structural piece. It's more of a flange um, for uh, the nut plate to hold against. And then I screw in the um, access panel, more of a cover. And you can see I'm starting on the, the nut plates on the bottom access panel. I ran out of nut plates, so I've got to wait for those to come in. Uh, I've started to run the brake lines. Kind of see that there next to the parking brake. And, and then got to figure out how to get under all that with the brake lines so they're not in the way. And I've got to order a return fuel line uh, for the fuel that the engine doesn't use and send, sends back to the tank. Uh, the spar here the release agent it's either one of two things but basically the release agent may have not been fully removed and so you get to start to see a little delamination i've already started working on this a little bit so it looks a lot worse than it was it was just starting to lift here um, i could get a chisel under it and it just kind of pushed away real easily so i drilled a hole here to go all the way through down to the bottom into the spar just a tiny bit to index this location so i'm going to put a the pin here with a probably a drill bit or something to just index this in the right place clamp it down and then i'll do the gluing uh, of the regluing of this socket now this is the spar of the wing as you can see here's the two wings and this spar here this portion of the spar overlaps this bar comes through here and into the socket and then pinned in on both ends so it's pretty critical that this is uh, solid not going to jiggle on you so just kind of do my due diligence here and go over this old uh, install and you can see it's this aerodite 420 pretty old um, Thankfully, I've got some some stuff left over, so I'll just be able to re-glue this back down after I prep it. I'll prob probably sand this down, or remove this old paint, scuff it, clean it, and repaint it. So uh, you can see there's some rust forming here, so I'll definitely use something a little more sturdier. All right, that didn't take too long. As you can see here, um, this part up here is where it was bonded really well and over here is where it started to delam and you can kind of see or just didn't have a good bond on the spar right here over here it's pretty good I was able to get up under it and pull but you can see just unfortunately things like that are gonna happen over time and it's always good to go back and inspect but clean this up and hopefully make it good as new well my battery died on my GoPro when I was working on uh, part of the section of this wing spar socket and I don't have very, very much video of me doing the repair. Um, what you're going to see next is a video that I set up on the tripod doing the last layup where I insert the spring washer on top of the socket. Um, you'll see me come in with some epoxy where I'll wet the top of that socket and then I'll lay down a two inch by two inch piece of bid on top of that spring washer. Um, I also add some flocks and if you pay attention to the video, I'm not talking in the video uh, just because I'm wearing a respirator and it would sound really muffled. 
but I'm, I'm looking for the peaks of the uh, flocks for the right consistency. It's kind of a pinkish color. And uh, so I'll show you that in the video. And then I add that to the back of the washer and add that to the top of the socket. Then I come in with a little more flocks and I make a, a fillet, a transition for the bid to lay down flat on. And then I lay that, that bit on there and then I come back with peel ply and, and kind of make that a nice finished look. Um, in the process, I'm also putting a bolt through the bushings to just align the washer. And after that, I clean that all up and take it out. Uh, you don't need that, obviously, because the bid will cover the hole. So, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, you can stick around, watch that little video. Again, there's, there's no audio. Maybe I'll throw some music in there just for something in the background. But I had a big fan going, so there's really nothing to hear. <laughs> and uh, I'll show you uh, kind of a close-up view of the finished product and what it looks like. All right, so here is the finished socket. As you can see, um, I've also put the aileron control back on, the quick attachment and the push rod there you can see. But uh, underneath uh, this, you can see the washer with the bi-directional cloth on there and then uh, the white stuff around here is just some flocks. And uh, it, it looks a lot uglier in the video than it, than it is. Yeah, I, I kind of come out here a little bit, but basically the, the function of that is just to lift that spar uh, tip in there. So it does, has a ramp, if you will. I do still need to do a little bit of cleanup right here, but other than that, it's, it's done. And you can see the pit pin where those two catch balls come in and out based on uh, when you hit this blue release. And the whole idea behind this setup is again so the those catch balls have something to ride hard against like the spring washer instead of this uh, thin steel and then of course there's a gap you can see here to here that's where the cockpit module the plane will go and there'll still be an additional gap and the instructions call for some washers to to take up that void and then you glue those in place so it's it's nice and secure but uh other than that should be done